So it's been like what? Two? Two and a half weeks since the launch of Arknights, and we're already getting possibly one of the most generous events I've ever seen. We're getting four new skins. One of them is for free. We're getting five new operators. One of them is for free, and it's a fucking five star. We're getting 200 sanity every single day. That's a free refresh and a half. We're getting tons of free pure, uh, pure originite whenever you clear an event stage. We're getting a new, a new actual stage, new story. Like, it's ridiculous. The event's gonna be absolutely nuts. So I wanna talk about the five operators that we're actually getting. I mean, we're getting a ton more shit other than that, but I mean, the game, it's looking real, real good. So let's talk about the five operators that we're getting, starting off with Midnight. Now, I hear a lot of people already, you know, not being too excited about Midnight, but here's what you need to understand. If any person is going to start from this point onward, the beginner experience is going to be shifted drastically because Midnight is game breaking for free to play players. And here's why. So he's a guard, right? And his base attack is actually quite decent. His attack speed is also quite fair. But the thing that's very important about him is his attack range. The attack range is incredibly universal and is going to make so many stages easier, especially like CE4 and CE5, uh, which is very important for a new player. So the attack range is already busted enough as it is because you can pair it with three vanguards in front of them. So you put a vanguard in this spot, you put a vanguard in this spot, you put a vanguard in this spot, if you look in the bottom right corner, and then you attack past all of them. So your midnight is going to give your teams crazy flexibility in defense formations. And the best thing about him, other than like, he's pretty much idiot proof to use like incorrectly, he also has this ability, okay? Attack plus 5%, that's obviously, you know, nobody gives a shit about that. But what he does is, is he changes attacks from physical to magical. So what that means in layman's terms is, if an unit, if a unit is heavily armored, ignore it. That is ridiculous. In case you haven't noticed, the early game experience is all about getting around armored units. So this dude is going to absolutely slaughter. Yes, the ability cooldown is very slow. However, with how early you're going to be able to deploy him, um, you should be able to get at least two uses out of that if uh, you're using him correctly. Not to mention, he also have crosses passive, which is going to be even better because on manual stages, if that procs, it's going to make manual stages an absolute joke. Now, yes, if you're relying on that to clear for auto, it's going to be a little bit yikes. But other than that, this guy legitimately is free-to-play player assistance incarnate. He's going to be a beautiful addition to the roster. And he's going to make this game even easier to get into, which means a more healthy fan base, a more active player base. Easy as shit. Now let's talk about Bee Hunter. Now this is probably the unit that I'm most excited for. That doesn't mean that she's the best, but that this does mean that she can do some really cool shit. Now I like attacking very, very fast, okay? Her base attack speed is 0.78. When you use her ability too, when it's maxed out, that's gonna bring her attack speed to 0.18 seconds, which means she's going to attack five times every single second. Now, when she does that, it's going to increase her attack by 7% each attack at E2 if you're attacking the same target. So this girl is a boss slayer, but I'm going to use it for as many things as possible, but this is just like an icing on the cake. She's going to be an absolute boss slayer, okay? Or at least a thick boy slayer. This girl doesn't mess with the little baby boys. She fights the bosses, right? Um, so let me explain to you how um, damage works because I haven't actually explained it on my channel before. It's actually very important though, and I should probably explain it in another video besides one of these random fucking update videos. So this is the way damage works, okay? So with Bee Hunter. So a lot of people think when they see attack power, that means how much damage they're going to do per second. That is not what that means. What attack power means is how much damage they're going to do per hit. But when you're calculating how much damage you do per hit, it actually goes attack power minus the enemy's defense, and that equals your lump sum of damage that you're going to do. So let's say Bee Hunter um, is fighting a unit with 300 defense like she has. That means you would do 488 minus 300, so that equals 188, okay? But she's gonna do 188 damage five times a second, so that means that she's going to do somewhere around 900 damage per second. But that's also before her passive, so you gotta take her attack power, you gotta increase by 35%, that's going to bring her up to roughly probably like 740, 750. And, you know, that becomes around from 900 damage per second to about on a 300 armor unit to about, let's say, what is that? Maybe 2000, 2500 damage per second. That's a rough guess. If I'm wrong, don't crucify me. Regardless, the important thing is, is that this girl is going to rip apart heavily magic resistant units. And she's also going to look absolutely badass doing it. I mean, her E2 is gorgeous. That, that oh, dude, she's awesome. I know she isn't going to be the greatest unit. And I'm aware of that, but I don't give a shit, man. She's going to be dope as shit. Now, speaking of units that are considered not that good, 
let's talk about Nightmare, because I kind of want to throw my name into the hat about why Nightmare actually fucks, and people, or at least the broad majority, are just incorrectly using her, okay? So Nightmare. We're going to address everything about her. First of all, her E2 is lame, okay? It goes from her standing up to her sitting down. It's really not that cool. Regardless, she is a very, very... Nobody does the shit that Nightmare can do. She's a very rare, unique unit, okay? So what I mean by that is that she's a unit that does damage. However much damage she does, that heals the units around her. One, at E1, then going up to two when you E or uh, you skill seven her, and then Elite one the uh, skill seven. So damage that returns is healing. That's already absolute bang for your buck. I mean, that's outrageous, right? The skill two is fine. I'm excited for its combo potential, but I'm really excited for the skill one. But in case you don't know what the skill two is, it puts a slow on everybody around them. However far they travel equals the amount of damage they're going to take because the further they go, the more damage they take. But it is a little bit counterbalanced because, I mean, if you're slowing somebody down, that's not going to let them move as far. So what's really the point? I'm hoping to be able to pair that with Shaw and Feeder. And when it knocks them back, I'm hoping that corresponds with the amount of damage they take. But I want to talk about skill one because this is the builder that gets me really excited. So we're going to look at her passive here. So it says, when equipping skill one, obtain 20% physical and magic evasion. When equipping skill two, attack plus 9%. So people see this shit and they're like, oh shit, I just wish they had the attack for both abilities. But here's the scenario in which I feel that Nightmare will absolutely shine. Let's say you have some damage dealers, right? And you need to heal them up. Nightmare is going to hit the targets and also ignore defense because she is a magical damage unit. But you also place your damage dealers first and then you place your Nightmare last. The way that units attack is they will attack what is ever placed last as far as range attacks go. So you use her up above, you draw the range attack fire from the bottom units to the top two units, she's able to heal herself and also heal the units below, um, which will also have smart AI because she will use her heal on whatever unit is the lowest and she will also be able to heal herself. So she'll be a ranged She'll be a ranged tank unit for a ranged, like, um, meat bag of sorts. Like, she'll take the hits from the ranged units, do damage to the heavily armored units, and also heal the targets on the ground by doing, like, three rolls at once. So, like, a tank, a healer, and a DPS. I really feel that people are sleeping on this unit, and this game's been out for a while. So, I know people really undervalue Nightmare. But given the proper scenario, sure, it might may be niche, but there's a lot of situations that actually call for that. Imagine how many times you've had to deal with these cockbags trying to attack your upper um, your upper range units, but you just drop in Nightmare. She has an extremely high physical evasion to the point where it's barely even RNG. It's 50% dog at E2. That shit's going to be insane. That, 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 that's borderline consistent, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, while people may hate on Nightmare a lot, dude, I don't know, man. I don't see any way, I don't see any way how this unit is bottom tier at all. She looks like an absolute full package, man. But once again, that's just my opinion that I have to say every time, just in case anybody goes by my word as gospel. It's not. I'm just some dude on the internet. Move it on. Okay, once again, you know, I hate going against what some of the CN players have told me, but uh, I don't know, man. I feel like Nightmare is going to be an absolute beast. Now, let's talk about a confirmed actual beast, which I can't seem to find here. Granny. Okay, so Granny, you're getting this girl for free, all right? Now, this girl is very deceptive because she looks fine, right? She looks fine as a unit. But let me tell you what her abilities actually do. Like, in, I mean that very specifically. So, first of all, she's going to get a kill on, or she's going to get one cost point on every kill, okay? You're also going to be able to refund her or retreat her and get four refund under points. So, pretty much infinite value unit, okay? That cannot be understated. We're also going to get her at max um, max potential, which means her actual cost will be a 12 cost unit. That's not bad at E1, right? So her first ability, when deployed, all vanguards operatives are going to get 30% physical evasion. That's not bad. Now, I don't want to rely on that physical evasion because that will be a little bit yikes for auto. So I don't really recommend using Granny's physical evade and hoping for it as one of your hopes for any of your auto teams. However, let's talk about her other ability. So her first ability is crap, okay? Defense plus 30%. That's obviously dog shit, okay? But let's talk about this ability and what it actually does, okay? So, never back down, okay? Max ability, you can get attack plus 80%, defense plus 80%, block count plus one, attack multiple enemies equal to block count. So, that plus 80% is not just a plus 80% because now you're also doubling the amount of units that you're attacking. So that is actually increasing her damage by 160% if there's two targets on her. That is absolutely 
ludicrous. That is absolutely ludicrous. And anything that she kills is going to give you a cost point back. This girl is an absolute beast. She's going to become... Dude, just say say goodbye to your courier. Say, I mean, you know, I mean, dude. Okay, okay, once again, I know courier and her don't share necessarily the exact same role. But I mean, Jesus Christ, Granny is so good. She's so good. And I really hope that people realize that. Because I get how some people might be, you know, sniff at that or scoff at that. But... Dude, honestly, she's an absolute beast, and her base stats are actually crazy good comparatively to the other vanguards. So, in my opinion, uh, don't sleep on this unit. You're going to be using her for a lot of things. Yostar is being incredibly generous by giving us this shit. Uh, and once again, thank you for that, dog. Now, last up, Scotty. So, this is where a lot of people ask me, should I wail for Scotty or should I wait for Chen? And I will answer that question after I explain what Scotty does. So, Scotty. She's a part of the Abyssal Hunters, okay? There's only two people in that role so far that I know of, which is Spectre and Scotty. I could be mistaken, but I don't believe that I am. So whenever she comes out, she's going to grant 18% attack to herself and your Spectre if you are running Spectre, but I don't really feel like you'd ever find a situation where you'd want to run Scotty and Spectre in the exact same fight that I know of right now. Also, her E2 is way better than her regular skin. God, she looks absolutely beautiful, okay? So she's a guard, signal block, that's fine. First ability, attack plus 20%, attack speed plus 20. That's actually not bad. That's actually a pretty solid ability, and the recharge time is very, very, very quick. Now, next ability, attack plus 80% for 15 seconds after the point. Once again, that is a very, very, very... I mean, that's a good ability. That's a good ability. And the last ability, we have attack, defense, and max HP plus 70%, okay? So, at max ability, that is going to be attack, defense, plus and max HP plus 130%, okay? So that's a lot of stats. Now, keep in mind, this shit takes a billion years to charge up, okay? That shit takes a billion years to charge up, but it lasts for a really long time. Scotty, obviously, if you can't tell by now, she's a boss killer, okay? She's an absolute boss obliterator, a massacrer, a, you know, beast incarnate. Like, she's going to rip the boss a new one. And the reason why this is very important to talk about is because it goes back to what I was saying about Bee Hunter. The way damage works, okay, is attack minus their defense equals your damage this girl attacks slow as shit which means that they can afford to make her attack power higher when you're using her second ability let's say the uh, boss has 300 armor like the other target that means that roughly she's going to have around maybe 2100 2100 2200 attack power okay so that means that she's going to deal 1900 1900 attack she's going to deal 900 damage every single time that she hits a boss that's going to be absurd armor is going to mean absolute shit all to her because she doesn't care because she can outscale it with how hard that she hits so this girl is going to take bosses and make them look like an absolute bitch and if you haven't noticed her attack animation is one of the coolest in the game which I hope to be able to showcase that day one of the uh, event if my polls go according to plan We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Regardless, let me answer that question now. If you're planning on saving your pure originite to either whale for Scotty or whale for Chen, who comes out next um, next uh, event, I'm going to do a hot take, and I'm going to say, if you're like really budgeting and this is the only time you get to whale, I would say wait for Chen. Now, while Scotty is a really, really, really good unit, she is, once again, just a boss killer. Um, and that does have a bit more niche, you know, a niche use than Chen, who is just straight up, straight up busted. Okay? Chen's ridiculous. That being said, I just want to say that for all my free-to-play players, because some of my free-to-play players, you know, they, they uh, rely on me for the information. So I didn't want to give you a hot take. If you're planning on whaling for either Chen or Scotty, I'd say go for Chen. Regardless, I'm a collector, okay? I'm a wife who caught a sewer. I'm going to get all of them because that's my goal. When I fill up my roster, then I'll beat the game, okay? But for right now, I need a lot of units, and Scotty is next on my list. I'm definitely going to get her 100%, I hope to God, unless Yostar doesn't allow me. But that being said, the event's going to be dope. The operators are great. Um, once again, I do feel that this is the event and operator release of deceptively good units. Um, mark my words on that. I feel like a lot of the units that I'm talking about right now will find a way onto your teams, will find a way into the meta, um, and they're going to be a lot more universal than people may be making them appear right now. So, that being said, that's just my opinion. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, yeah. 
I'm stoked. You know, join me on Twitch for this shit if you have any questions. I mean, this event's gonna be an absolute banger. But yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. Last day to prep. Farming up LMD. Farm up those EXP tickets. Farm up the fucking uh, supply chips. That way you don't have to waste any time not farming the insane drop rates for the tier 3 rewards on, uh, you know, for E2 and your operators on the event map. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've been Tecton. Y'all been great. Hope y'all have a damn good one. Peace. <laughs>